praise God from whom all blessings flow. Although God uses men, but it is in him that we live, we move, and we have our being. All our help comes from the Lord, and we do thank him for keeping us. When we couldn't keep ourselves, you know, God has us in his hands, and and no one can pluck us out. The gates of hell shall not prevail against God's church. So we thank God for the brief overview of what God has been doing at St. James and uh, the way that Elder Thomas presented. I can just say amen and ex- extend the invitation. <laughs> but we thank God that we still have to preach the word of God. So this morning, we're going to Proverbs. And I hope next, uh, next uh, year at this time, you know, we have one of our former members, uh, Reverend Robinson. We always worship with Mount Zion. So we hope that next year God will move this pandemic out of the way and we get, we'll get a chance to meet with them once again on next year. We're going to Proverbs, the first chapter. And we're going to start reading at the fifth verse of Proverbs, first chapter. And it reads, Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables, sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of of the Lord is beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Verse 7 again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. This morning we want to talk about are you wise or foolish? Are you wise or foolish? There are some people who would like to be seen as wise by those who they are around. They're always running their mouths trying to impress people with what they're saying. And they would have you to believe that they can speak professionally on any subject. They're always talking, but what they're saying many times amount to nonsense. Solomon is the writer of the Proverbs. And he is the third king over Israel. He was the son of David and Bathsheba. Solomon was very young when he ascended to the throne of David. David had many other sons who were older than Solomon. But Solomon was chosen by the Lord. Well, after he was installed as the third king of Israel, God appeared to him and he asked him, What do you want me to give you, Solomon? Solomon told the Lord, you made me the king, and I'm just a little child. I don't know how to be king over your chosen people. Uh, I want you to give me an understanding mind that I'll I'll be better than anyone before me or after me. For the Lord was pleased that Solomon asked for wisdom. And he told him, since you didn't ask me for a long life, since you didn't ask me for the death of your enemies or wealth for yourself, I'm going to give you what you asked for. You'll be wise and you'll have a discerning heart. And there never would have been anybody as wise as you are before you or nobody wise as you are after you. But since Solomon was a man that 
possessed great wisdom. And we need to see what can we gather concerning wisdom from him. We're talking about are you wise or foolish? In this text, Solomon tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. This morning, I want to look at three classes of people. The foolish sinners, the foolish Christians, and the wise servants. First of all, Solomon tells us that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So this class of people are foolish sinners. The world is full of people who don't believe there is a God. You have those who have studied science intensely and they've developed their theories about creation. Talking about the Big Bang Theory and we're evolving from apes. And people have bought in to their theories and rejected God as the creator. But I want you to know that there's no excuse for being a foolish sinner. Everything in the world is crying out to us that there is a God who is our creator. The Bible records that the invisible things of God since the creation of the world are clearly seen being perceived through the things that are created, even the everlasting power and divinity. So we are without excuse. God made the world in such a way that creation is testifying of who he is. You see, every time that we see the seasons change, it should remind us that God is the one that, that's ordering. Is it too hot or too cold to inhabit the earth? This is a fact that should make us understand that God was thinking about us when he made this world. The trees and the plants produce seeds to continue to replenish themselves. The animals in the world are con constantly reproducing themselves. Everything that God made is functioning the way that he made it except man. We have every reason to see that God is in full control of the universe. Yet many people walk around in this world trying to live their lives independent of God. Jesus told a story about a man who planted a crop and he harvested a bumper crop, one like he had never harvested before. The man looked at his crop, and then the man looked at his bonds, and he said that my bonds are not big enough to carry this great harvest that God has given me. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tear down my old bonds, and I'm going to build bigger bonds. I'm going to put all of my crops in my barn. But then he made a foolish statement. He said, after I get my crops in the barn, I'm going to tell myself, eat, drink, and be merry, because I have more than I need to last me for a long time. But God came to the man that night, and he said, you foolish one, tonight your soul is required of you. And all the goods that you prepared and put in your bond, who shall they be when you leave this world? 
The question is this morning, are you wise or are you foolish? You see, we have to realize that everything that we own, God gave it to us. Every breath that we take it was provided to us by the Lord. In 1 Corinthians, Paul asks the question, where's the wise? Where's the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? It was God's good pleasure through the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. He chose the foolish things to confound the wise. He chose the weak things to confound the mighty. He, 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 he gave us the despised things, the things that are base, the things that are nothing, to bring to nothing the things that are. And he does it in such a way that none of us can glory in his presence. We all have to realize that God is higher than we are. God is much more wiser than we are. We have to realize that we can't glory in God's presence. The question still remains, are you wise or are you foolish? But then secondly, we need to consider the foolish Christian. These are people who believe there is a God. Oh, they may be people who have claimed him and they've given their lives to him. But yet he's not Lord over their lives. The church is filled with foolish Christians. They're living their lives as if there is no God. Foolish Christians are the cause of confusion among the family of God. Sometimes you can look at church people and you wonder why can I find liars, backbiters, envious people, deceptive people and selfish people in the family of God. It's all because many of them are foolish Christians. Jesus instructed us to love one another, but still you can find all kind of selfishness in the church. People who are only thinking about themselves. Are you wise or are you foolish? Many of us are worrying about how we're going to make it in this world. How will we provide for ourselves and our families? We can't sleep at night, but still we claim we have faith in God. We forget that God said he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Oh, we don't need to be foolish. We seem to forget that David counseled us. That I've been young, but now I'm old. Yet have I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. We ought to realize that God will take care of his own. The Lord has blessed us today with many resources. But we spend what God has given us on things that will pass away one day. We spend our money on our selfish desires and then we'll then claim that I can't afford to tithe. Many of us are being foolish even though we're Christians and we are part of the family of God. But we need to realize that the Lord has instructed us not to be wise in our own eyesight, but fear the Lord and despise evil. If we'll obey what God has told us to do, we'll have health for our bodies and we'll have marrow for our bone. We need to honor the Lord with our substance and the first fruit of our increase so our bonds will be filled with plenty. If you've been born again, you can still be foolish. You ought to ask yourself, am I wise or am I foolish? God is looking for those who are wise enough to do his will. 
foolish Christians. We get mad when they can't have their way and quit. Foolish people are gossiping about other Christians. They're only thinking about themselves and not the well-being of others. No, it's a strong message, but I can't help it. I got to deliver it anyway. Every one of us ought to do an intense and concentrated assessment of ourselves and see if we're wise or foolish. Too much at stake. We're living in a world that seems to be going crazy, and God needs a wise church in the world today. God needs those who are really his disciples. He's seeking those who will do his will. This leads to the last group. This group are those who are wise enough to be servants of the Lord. It's foolish to spend a lifetime on this earth and never accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. God has done everything necessary for us to be saved from our sins. It's also foolish to accept the Lord in our heart and not benefit from the choice that we made or uh, not be a benefit to the kingdom of God. We have the Holy Spirit available to us today to be our navigator into the plan that God has for our life. We have to work to, br to, do, to bring glory to our Lord. Oh, we can't be thinking about ourselves. God needs to have glory in the life that he's given to us. We ought to be wise enough to answer the call of God to go into his vineyard and work. Solomon told us that happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that obtains understanding. For the gain that you have is better than silver and the profit is better than gold. It's more precious than rubies. None of the things that we can desire in our life can compare to wisdom. When you have wisdom, it, is it, it comes along with length of days in your right hand and riches and honor in your left hand. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are paths of peace. She is a tree of life to those who can grab a hold to her and happy are those who, who can retain her. The question still remains, are you wise or are you foolish? I want you to know it's real good to be a servant of the Lord. I know this world that we're living in is functioning in a way that's filled with sin. Today you have people who are trying to use their own minds to, to call those things that are evil good and those things that are, 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 are evil bad. Good things are bad and bad things are good. But I have a God who left us instructions on how to live our lives. If you're going to be wise, servants of the Lord, you can't depend on what man is saying. Sometimes you have to walk all by yourself. I don't understand those who say they are Christians but are following after the things of this world. Oh, I understand that our minds are being influenced by those who are walking by our side. This old flesh that we're wearing is crying out, you ought to do the things that are wrong, do the things and it'll make you feel good. But I want you to know if you follow after the flesh, you are foolish. You ought to tell your flesh, I'm a servant of the living God. Yet if you finally are born again, if you're living for the Lord, God has placed down 
on the inside of us a voice that will tell us, I want to follow my master's will. I have a God who is alive. I have a God who made this world. I have a God who gave me breath. I have a God who blessed me every day. I have a God who gave me new mercy. I have a God who is talking to me. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger. They will not follow. We we ought to be wise enough to hear the voice of the Lord. I want you to know nobody can talk like my God. Every now and then, he'll whisper in my ear, and when he whisper, he can give me joy in times of sorrow. He can give me peace in the midst of a storm. Every now and then, every now and then, while we're walking with the Lord, people can get on our case sometime. Our enemies can come in like a flood. During those times, our flesh tell us you ought to straighten them out. You ought to give them a piece of your mind. But then that still small voice deep down on the inside of us will tell us, son, Hold your peace. I am able to fight your battle. If you just keep still, I'm a mighty battle axe in a time of war. We, not, we don't need to be foolish. We need to, we need to be servants of a living God. This old flesh uh, tell us every now and then when we, we're being confronted by our trials and tribulation. Sometime when we're walking with the Lord, one problem can stack on top of another problem. Every now and then, just like Job, the runners keep on coming with one problem after another problem. Our minds are tell us, I just don't know how I'm going to handle my problem. Fear will grip our heart. But then a voice down on the inside of us uh, tell us God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I don't know about you, but when I hear that voice, it brings calmness in my heart. It tells me I have a God who can handle all of my difficulties. I have a God who can solve all of my problems every now and then while we're walking with the Lord. One friend after another friend, one family member after another family member, one person that we thought would always be by our side will walk away and the devil will whisper in our ears, you're walking by yourself. Nobody loves you, but I want you to know he's a liar. My God, my God, my God told me in my ear, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He told me, Lo, I'll be with you, not sometime, always. Always, always, even to the end of the world, I want to tell you, keep on walking with the Lord. Keep on depending on his word. Keep on listening to that voice down on the inside of you. While you're walking with the Lord, trouble might have you tossed and driven by the winds of difficulty. There are times everything that you try to solve your problem 
will not work out for you. But I want to tell you, remember, you have Jesus on board your ship. If you call, if you call on the name of the Lord, my God, my God, my God, my God, he is able to rise up and just say, peace be still, and the wind and the waves will obey his will. I want to tell you, don't try to walk with the world. Don't try to use your mind. Don't try to reason your way through this life. Call on the name of the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And my God, my God, he is able, he is able to strengthen your heart. The whole world is marching by the beat of one drum. The whole world is dancing to the music of the, what the band is playing. But if you belong to the Lord, there is another drum that you just can't march by that drum that the world is marching by. You can't keep in step with the world because there's a narrow road that God is calling us to march on. Every now and then, you find a traveler. You can't march by the drum of the world. Your ears can hear another cadence. Your ears can hear another band that's playing in the sky up above my head. I hear music in the aisle up above my head. I can't pay attention to the music that's playing down here. I sweet feel a sweet melody in the sky. I lift my eyes until the hills from which come my help, my help, my help, my help, my help comes from the Lord. Every now and then I hear a voice telling me, hang in there, keep the faith, keep on marching for the Lord. One of these days I'm going to hear the Lord say, well done, well done, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come on up a little bit higher. I'm going to make you ruler over many. That day, I'm looking forward to joining that heavenly choir, singing holy, 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 holy. The Lord of hosts, the whole world is filled with his glory. One of these days, this whole world is going to move off the scene. John said, I saw a new heaven, and I saw a new earth. Because the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Don't worry about your sickness. Don't worry about the pain. Don't worry about being broke. Don't worry about your enemy. We have another world waiting on us. I just can't wait until I see Jesus for myself. Tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being by my side. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for carrying me over the hill. Thank you, Lord, for carrying me through the valley. Thank you, Lord, for guiding my footsteps. Do you know him? Do you really know him for yourself? Can you hear? Can you hear that auto drum? Can you hear? Can you hear the music in the air? Keep on Looking up, don't worry what's going on around you. Look a little higher. God is able, God is able, God is able to carry you through anything that you face in this world. Keep on looking up to him. Are you wise enough to hear that drum?
Are you wise? Are you foolish? Are you a foolish sinner? Are you a foolish Christian walking around looking down on other Christians walking around gossiping, backbiting, lying, say you're a child of God. Are you a wise servant? This made me examine myself. I mean, the sermons that God lead me to preach is not pointing just a finger at anybody. It's for all of us. We all need a checkup every now and then. Next week, I have to go and take some tests before I see my doctors for a regular appointment. That's the checkup on this flush that I'm wearing. But the Bible and preaching and teaching is for us to do a checkup on our spiritual man to make sure it's operating correctly. We don't want to miss hearing the voice of God. We don't want to miss operating in his will. And it's real easy to get off track looking at what folks are doing to you. Sometimes Satan can get into folks that's real close to you and make you lose your focus. But don't let him take you off course. Love him anyway. I dare you to love your enemies like God told us to do. Confuse your worst enemy. Wrap a present up for him every now and then. Just give it to him. And make him blow their minds. Do something special for them. That's what God wants us to do. God done love conquers all. Light overcomes darkness. Don't let the world lure you into being this low down as, as Satan people are. God is looking for some folks that's willing to walk for him. I want to tell you, it's not an easy road, but God will give you the strength if you try to walk his road. He'll give you the strength to do it. He wouldn't command you to do something that he wouldn't empower you to do. Satan will tell you you're a fool. You know how to straighten those folks out. You hadn't forgotten how to cuss them out. You hadn't forgotten how to fight. Well, what are you doing to God? God is blessing you every day. And you, you get out there and you show out. Who can you witness to then? We got to be careful not to let Satan get a victory. Are you wise or foolish? That's a challenging question. It challenges me. I don't care how close you are to God. We still have to examine ourselves and make sure that we're staying in step with his drum, and we haven't joined Satan's band. I used to march in a band when I was a kid, and when we weren't playing, the drums were playing to keep us in step with one another. Which drum are you marching to? Which sheet of music? Are you playing your instrument with? That's something that we have to challenge ourselves. Because Satan is crafty. He wants a victory in God's people. He, wants, he doesn't want to see us loving each other. He doesn't want to see us advancing the kingdom. And he doesn't want sinners to see our light. Somebody out there that heard this message has not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And I want to tell you that Satan is giving you all kind of excuses to ignore what you heard, even though you know it, it pierced your heart. You know that you, you felt 
the spirit moving on your heart. But Satan is giving you all kind of excuses to ignore what you heard. I want to tell you that's the enemy. God is the one that touched your heart. The spirit is the one that, 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 that penetrated that heart. Don't harden your heart. Don't let Satan deny you the opportunity to be a child of God. You might say that's, that's weak. No, you're weak to listen to the Satan. He has already stolen enough from you. God came that you might have life, have it more abundant. Satan comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. He's already taken enough. He's already killed enough. Your relationships are, are raggedy. Uh, the things that you had your hands on, it, uh, le uh, uh, they're leaving your hands. You thought what you were doing was having a good time, but Satan stole, killed relationships. I don't like a thief. God loves you personally, and he wants you to be his child. You don't have to earn it. Christ paid the price. He took your place. Your sins had to be paid for. God is holy, but we are undone on our own. But Jesus came. And God placed every one of our sins on him, and, and he punished him. He's a God of justice, and our sins have to be paid for, and Jesus paid for them. But you have to accept what he did. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's just that simple. Just say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I haven't done right. I know I don't deserve the least of your mercy, but would you forgive me? And accept me as your child. Just that simple. If you say that and mean it, God will save you. And the Holy Spirit will come and live inside of you and give you the strength to resist the things that has you bound. Do you come today? It's just that simple. Don't look at me and don't look at other Christians and say, I can't do what they're doing. We can't do what we're doing unless the Holy Spirit empower us. By nature, we're sinners. And still, we're wrestling. That's why you, I said what I said today. Are you a foolish Christian? You, you have a lot of folks that, that's just as evil as people in the world that's been saved. You say, well, how can God let them get away with that? They don't get away. The Bible said, those that he loved, he'll chastise. My parents, when I was growing up, they loved me enough that when I wasn't doing what they told me to do, they chastised me because they didn't want to lose me. Well, God knows better how to chastise than what mom and daddy did. So they're not getting away. But it's best to be chastised by him than not to be a part of his family. Do you come today? And accept Jesus. Is your Lord and Savior. I don't want to leave this world without you. Time is winding up. Everything that God said will happen is happening right now. The last event is for Christ to come back for his church. Be sad if you're left behind. You're welcome to call the church and talk to someone. If you want to talk to me, leave, your, leave the phone number. I'll be glad to call you back. I'll do what I can to help you understand even further this plan of salvation. God is not willing that any man should perish. He, went out, he came to save the whole world. But sadly, Satan keep on stealing opportunities. And one time, one of these days, you're going to have your last one. I advise you, not necessarily to join St. James, but if you want to go to another church, let me know where you want to go, and, and I'll look the pastor up, and, I, and I'll let them know that you're coming. Join yourself to the saints of God that they might gain strength from you, and you can gain strength from them. Don't let this moment pass while you still have breath in your body.
accept Jesus Christ into your life. And by way of announcement, we're very proud of our graduates, kids who kept their kept themselves together enough to finish high school and some have finished college. We want to recognize them next week. And if you have some and they're not turned in the information, you can still turn it in. If you have people that's not even a part of the church that's, that's in your family, we want to recognize them too. We need to encourage one another. It's enough people trying to tell us what we can't do. But I want to tell my people that we're just as intelligent and we have the same ability to learn as any other people. Don't let anybody lie to you. That's a lie from Satan. I tell my young folks all the time, I see greatness in you. It's sad when people are putting their own flesh down, just like the old sorry daddy, you just like the old trifling mama. Satan is using you when you, when you do that. Speak life to them instead of death. I know that they can do whatever God, if they, if I tell them all the time, and you hear me say it next Sunday, if you apply yourself, if you work hard and seek your God first in your life, you'll be surprised how high God is going to carry you. So we're going to recognize them next Sunday. And every Sunday morning, we're going to continue on the first and third Sunday. And this is the fifth Sunday, so we'll be worshiping inside the building on the fifth Sunday. But on the first and third Sunday, we will have talk and praise until we finally come back together inside this building. We're making plans now, and we don't know when it's going to be, but we're trying to make plans to safely come back together. And every Sunday morning at 945, we have Sunday school. 11 o'clock, a, a message will be delivered. And on Wednesday evening, we have Bible class. Let's take advantage of what God has given us so that when we do come back together, our spirits will be in tune with one another because we'll hear the same Sunday school lesson, the same sermon, and the same Bible class. You can get it on YouTube or you can get it on our website. So please take advantage of this and let's pray for one another that God will strengthen us and give us the wisdom that we need to get through this crucial time in the history of the world and be a blessing to the kingdom. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we tried to do what you place on our hearts, God. And Lord, I know that might have messed some things up, but this vessel is weak, Father. But Lord, you're able to take a weak vessel and still strengthen your people, Father. So Lord, I ask you to use this time of worship, God, to encourage somebody, Father, to call someone to yield their lives to you, Father, and to bring hope to those who are hopeless, Father. You're still in control, Father. And, Lord, there's not anything that you can do. One time a question was asked, is there anything too hard for God? And the answer is, there's not anything that's too hard for you. So, Lord, we ask you right now, Father, continue to hold us in your hands, Father. And keep us in your divine care. Lord, help us to walk even closer to you, Father, in the future than we have in the past, Father. And, Lord, enable us to be about your business, Father, doing the things that you've called us to do. Don't let us just be church members, Father. But, Lord, let us be carrying your kingdom in this sin-cursed world. Everywhere we go, Father, help us to be a light. We thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your family, Father. And, Lord, we're praying for those who are sick, those who are downtrodden, those who have lost hope, Father. And, Lord, we ask you to help the church, Father, to reach out for those who are weak, Father. We love you, Father. We honor you, and we praise your great name. We pray this prayer in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. May God richly bless and keep you is my prayer.